Hey, hey, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to change the movement code a bit that we have for the player right now. We're going to introduce the Vector2D class and the movement class, which I'm going to call it. So let's get to it. The first thing that we're going to do is to introduce a new abstract class between game object and player and we're going to call it the moving entity and we're going to move the movement code into here instead so start by making the class we're going to make it abstract and say that it now extends the game object okay so now this will need the controller and alt enter to import let's make the constructor and let's also call super all right so now we have the controller we call that constructor let's make the public void update and leave it like this for now and it probably wants an overwrite all right that's good we're gonna fill this in with stuff. Let's go to the player and just update that. Let's make it extend the moving entity instead. Now we don't need to store this controller and we don't need to do that. However, we need to pass it to the super constructor. So the constructor of the moving entity. All right, so let's see where we can move this code because we are moving it. We're actually moving that code as well. So get gone with this and cut this out. Keep it in your clipboard. Okay. Let's go to the core package because I didn't know where this class was supposed to be and we might move it later, but let's just put it here for now. Let's call this class our movement. So what I'm thinking is that this class will keep the movement vector and the velocity and let's just do it and see what happens so now we need this to have actually a vector 2d which is the next class that we'll create and we'll call this the vector and my reasoning for this is that it will make sense when we use it from outside when we have a movement object and we say movement dot get vector so the movement vector right so that was my reasoning for that. And then we need the, the velocity. I'm not sure if I'm going to call it velocity. I might just call it speed because it makes a little bit more sense to me. I'm not very math-y. I never studied math a whole lot. So large, weird words are large and weird. Let's just go with speed. Everybody knows what speed is. Okay, alt insert, make a constructor. And we don't need to take in a vector. We only need to take in a speed. The vector we can initialize to a new vector 2D. And we still don't have this class. So let's just generate it, create class. And let's put it in core as well. Why not? <laughs> All right. Now we have our vector 2D class. And it, of course, needs two components, which will be the private double x and a private double y. Let's also alt insert and make the constructor. Let's see what we might need more. Oh, let's just do that when we need it. Okay, let's go back to the movement class because now we made this and now it wants something. Let's just give it zeros for now. So it's basically empty, an empty vector. And where do we want to go from here? We want the update method. Okay, so update. And now this can take the controller. I don't want to store the controller in here because I don't think it belongs to a movement. But our movement needs the controller to be able to calculate the vector, to be able to know where we're going. So we're just going to pass it in here instead once we update. Okay, so now hopefully you still have what we had in the player in your clipboard. Otherwise, you'll just have to pause and go back and look. So now we can use this, right? 
we already have this which calculates the delta and these only does ones right so basically this tells us the direction now uh, instead of it being the entire movement it's our direction so if the delta y is minus minus then basically the direction is of course minus one and once we multiply that by the speed it will go faster we get a movement vector so let's just do that now let's say that our vector is a new vector and let's actually make it do like this uh, so the delta x and the delta y and now we have a direction vector uh, it only tells us which direction we want to go but we haven't done anything with our speed yet so let's do vector dot multiply multiply there we go and put in the speed we need to generate this so create method just hit enter to get by those steps and now this is very simple we just multiply each component by our scalar value the speed so y times equals speed as well now we have let's just get rid of that extra uh, now we have a direction vector that we've multiplied by our speed. So this should be updated and well. Let's also make the getter. So alt insert, make the getter for the vector. So movement.getVector. Awesome. Now this moving entity needs a movement. So let's make a private movement, movement and Let's make it in here. This movement is equal to a new movement. And this one's a speed. Let's put two in here for now. And now in this update method, we first want to update our movement. And we now have the controller in here. We can do that. Now we need to apply this movement to our position. So let's just do position.apply movement. And of course, we don't have this yet. So we're just going to create that inside of our um, of our position class. So let's just get the vector from out of there. Vector movement vector. Ah, it's very long. We all know where it came from. Let's just call it the vector. Movement get vector. So now what we want to do is, of course, x plus equals vector get x and we haven't made these getters yet so we're going to do that in just a bit vector dot get y now let's go into the vector and generate those methods alt insert getter both of them all right we were in the position okay so now we actually apply this movement and i wonder if this is all that we need let's just try it out and see if i missed anything I obviously missed something. Let's see what I missed. Uh, player, oh right, we didn't call super.update. So it didn't run uh, the moving entity code. Okay, let's try that again. All right, now it actually works. Uh, I don't know how much time I've spent already, but there's something that I'd like to fix. Um, so as you can see, or maybe you can't, but it's moving faster diagonally. Let's just do something that makes it easy to see that. Um, inside of our vector 2D class, we need to get the length. So let's make a public double length. So the length is very easy to calculate. You just take the square root and we use the math library from uh, from Java. So the square root of each component by the power of 2 uh, summed up. So, sorry, x times x plus y times y. So this is the length of our vector. And now that we have that, let's also alt insert, generate... No, we don't need that right now, right? No, we don't need that right now. Sorry, let's skip that. Let's go to 
where do we want to do this? It's just so that we can see what's going on. Let's do it down here actually. So sout and then tab. And then let's just do vector length. Now it's gonna spam down here, but at least we're gonna be able to see something. So if I press down, you can see two, which makes sense because the length of our vector is two. That's our speed, so it should be two, right? So up and down two, left and right two, diagonally 2.82 something something. Well, basically 2.8. So what we need to do to fix that is that we need to normalize our vector. We need to make it a unit vector before we multiply it, which means a unit vector means that all of the components summed up equals one. And that is what we want. So normalizing is pretty easy, but there's something to think about. All right, so let's just make this normalize. And what we do is that we divide each of these components by the length. The problem is, let's uh, just store the length first, double length equals length. I don't know if this is even necessary doesn't probably even matter on a modern computer if you only do this once, but let's just do that. Um, double length is length. And so in here we want X to be divided equals by the length. However, if X is now zero, then the division will be very, very unhappy. So we do not want that. So we must first check if x is zero, because in that case we want it to return zero, otherwise we can return, uh, sorry, x divided by length. Okay, let's do exactly the same thing for the y. So the y is equal, if y is zero, it's equal zero, or if it's not, we divide it by length. So this should do it. If we now go into our movement class and we normalize our vector before we multiply it by the speed, let's see what this says. Okay, so up and down still working, diagonally. As you can see, the numbers down here are 1.9999, uh, you can see that. And this is actually going to be an issue for us. So let's fix that now. So when I started this project, I thought that having the position in an int would be sufficient. Me since, I mean, we can only paint in one pixel, right? We can't paint half a pixel. So I was like, why do, would I need to have a position that's in between pixels? But this actually became a problem now that our vector has doubles because when we add the double to our int position, it will just cut off all decimals. So as you saw before, we got 1.9999, whatever, but it just cuts off the decimals. So what we get is actually one. So it didn't fix our problem entirely. So I think we actually have to make these into doubles in order for them to store, well, the position properly and we'll just make helper functions to turn it into an int and the helper functions will round them for us. So let's just start by seeing if we can't, can we refactor this? Do we have to write it? Can it do it for us? Type, type my, oh, sorry. I saw type migration. Uh, let's go refactor type migration. Let's make this into a double. So refactor that and then do the same for this one. Uh, refactor, type migration, double. Why do I want to write long all the time? Okay, double, double. And we can still initialize it to a whole value. That's not the end of the world. We might do something about this later. However, now our getx is a double and there are many places where we're gonna use this where we need ints. So let's make int Let's make uh, methods that return these as ints. So int x, where we'll use, I'm not even sure what's available, round. Okay, so we have round, which I hope is to the closest whole number. 
So let's just round our x, right? Oh, and then also let's return it. And it's still along. Let's just make that an int. Okay, and let's do the same for the y. Int y math round y. So now I can see that the renderer is very sad. So this uses ints. So let's make use of that because again, this is drawing on a graphics and you can't draw half a pixel. So in Y. Okay, let's just try this again. And hopefully this works better. This should at least have the position in the right place all the time and we're moving and everything looks good so hopefully that's enough for now all right thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video hello